do a better job than you. Is this the guinea pig scene? <laughs> yes, it is. Not as good as I remember as a kid, obviously, because the special effects aren't great, but for the time they were fantastic. But compared to modern special effects, of course, it's a vast difference, but still impressive. Yeah, <laughs> imagine eating a guinea pig like that, just straight down. Oh, now the eyes are coming out? Lovely. They are lizards or reptilians or snakes or whatever. Some form of reptile. And there's the tongue. Do they have venom? They're lizards. They're reptiles. The skin is fake. The eyes are fake. Everything's fake. I don't think I'd want to be dating one of them. I wonder is this where the whole reptilian conspiracy started? I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I read conspiracy sometimes for a bit of a laugh. And you know there's a whole conspiracy the reptiles run the world, David Icke and all that stuff. Did it start with this or I must look it up. Like was there a reptilian conspiracy before V came out? <laughs> Because if it started after V, then it's quite obvious it originated with V. It's insane, by the way, but if you haven't read it, look it up. Alert and all the affiliates, the whole network. Coming. Yes, damn right. Mike Donovan has got a tape that's supposed to knock our socks off. The aliens will shut this broadcast down, I can almost guarantee it. Or claim that Mike is part of the conspiracy and working with the scientists. An astonishing occurrence just took place aboard the mothership, just off... Hey, what's going on? Hello, New York. I knew it. The aliens are interrupting the broadcast. It was obvious. They're in space. They can disrupt the satellites. This is Christine Walsh, the visitor's supreme commander, John. Alien propaganda message coming up. My friends throughout the world, I'm sad to say that there has been a carefully coordinated attempt by the conspiracy of scientists to commandeer control of... Okay, so they're saying the scientists are now terrorists and are bombing all the refinery sites. They've had to take over the TV stations to control the message and to get the truth out there, <laughs> their truth. Yeah, this is propaganda at its finest, isn't it? Michael Donovan of the United States has proved to be the biggest traitor. I knew it. And extreme my take. Setting up to copy right now. Man, we are in big trouble. Tell me about it. Yeah, you're in big trouble, all right, because the entire world is going to be after you. Your only hope is to find some of those rogue scientists. State of martial law will be most helpful at this time. Okay, so now they're deploying martial law, they're taking over the government, they've taken over the communications, they have their Hitler Youth, or their version of the Hitler Youth, which is the traitor brigade working against humanity, and you have, which is probably most of the populace, the useful idiots who are just going on about their business and ignoring what's happening around them. Very interesting, but again, the comparison with the whole Nazi party ideology and the time in the 30s and 40s is, is very clear. Everyone they are our friends. Cooperate. They are our friends. What's he doing at the Air Force Base? Is he going to steal a plane or a helicopter, maybe? Hello, Sancho. What's the matter? I can't work for you no more. Because the husband is a scientist, so they're being ostracized. They say I could either work for them or for you. Never mind, I understand. See what I mean about the general populace being useful idiots in the circumstances? Because they're doing the job of the aliens for them. Any scientist who may uncover the truth, they're being ostracized and no one will believe them. And the Supreme Commander oh, urges you... I'm so you. tired of her face and only hearing one side of what's going on. Well... The truth is the truth. Okay, so Daniel's father is starting to suspect that things are not right, which of course they're not. Communications are controlled, you can't make long distance phone calls. Police are on the streets, martial law's been declared, the visitors are patrolling with police. Some member of his group had actually been what? Informed? On his own parents, and they disappeared. Okay, so similar to the communist and Nazi system, they use the kids to inform on the parents, and then the parents get disappeared. 
So the mother's worried that they can't trust Daniel, which I think is a fair worry given how much he's gone into the whole visitor squad thing. All I said was I was tired of hearing... Uh, hearing one side of the news, their side. Well, I meant... So the visitors have been very effective in silencing all opposition. The parents can't speak if their kids are in the visitor squad or not Hitler Youth, whatever the hell it is, uh, because the kids might inform. The can't speak to scientists because the scientists are ostracized and those who may speak out against the visitors are considered terrorists. Martial law is declared, calls are being monitored, and they have to have a pass to make long distance calls. So it's quite effective. And it's quite scary that this is actually, as I said, a metaphor for what happened under A, Nazism, and B, Communism. The scientist your father worked with was arrested for conspiracy. Polly got beaten up at school. And Quentin is still missing. Why don't we stay and fight? And actually, I was probably unfair earlier when I said this is really just a, an analogy for what happened under the Nazi regime. It could equally be applied to the communist regimes because in the communist societies, it was usually the intelligentsia, the scientists, etc., the teachers, the poets, the philosophers that were targeted and got rid of first because they were the ones who could think and understand that what was happening wasn't right. It's the uneducated who tend to go along with it. So this could equally be an analogy for a communist regime. Totalitarian suppression of the truth. Not only on television, but they've got the papers too. We are under martial law. And paranoia. Okay, so this is the start of a resistance group or a resistance cell. Well, we organize. Well, look, any complex structure, like our bodies, for example, starts with individual cells. The cells will reproduce, expand themselves, and join with others. She's right, though. They have no other choice. They have to organize and try and link in with other cells and other groups and other cities. That Christine... Walsh! Yes, now, she's surely on the inside. Maybe too much on the inside. One of us should contact her. I don't think, to be honest, they have much hope of getting Christine on their side. She seems to be, as the guy said, totally in with the visitors and buying their whole spiel. Sounds good to me. Okay, and everybody has to bring at least four other people with them. How about that? Agreed? Agreed. That's dangerous. That's actually quite stupid because everyone brings four people, one of them's bound to be an informer, one of them's bound to be weak link. Nah, they'd be better sticking with just themselves until they all get to know and trust each other and have built contacts with other resistance cells and then maybe bring one person each that you completely trust. Yeah, but uh, I like Italian food much better though, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Actually, scratch that. Don't bring anyone. Wait until you hear someone giving out about the visitors and then suss them out to see if they'd be interested in a resistance group. Who's going to help us? I don't know. I do. She's going to ask the old man, the old man neighbor. Lynn and Stanley never used this place. I knew it. She was going to the old man to help them. But what about Daniel, his grandson? Isn't Daniel his grandson? Father, can I talk to you outside? We had to put you in a suitcase. In a suitcase. You were eight months old. That's how we smuggled you out. Okay, so these guys are Jewish, and the father and mother were in the concentration camp. And that's why he wants to help the family. It reminds him of what happened to them, and no one helped them. Don't you see, Stanley? They have to stay, or else we haven't lined a thing. That's a powerful reason to give his son to help his family, you know? You scared the hell out of me. I've been so worried for you. Yeah, I've been worried for me too. Okay, she still has a thing for Mike. Let's see how far it goes. Will she help him? <laughs> Visitors know that Mike is at Christine's house and are coming to get him. Will Julie warn him? Did Christine set off an alarm somehow? Hmm. She must have, because she seems to be keeping them there deliberately. The 80s really loved their laser guns, didn't they? Everything remotely sci-fi had laser guns. They're cool though, and I did love them as a kid, so still excited to see them. So don't tell me, Julie's going to find Mike, and Mike is going to be one of the four that she brings to the resistance cell. And here's Daniel. Is he going to inform on the family living in the back? I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I couldn't stand it in your pool house another minute. Oh, she's after telling him. Good. 
They still ought to help us find some of their weaknesses. Let's hope so. Let's get a move on. I'm not sure whether they bought my ass. Okay, so they're not getting guns. They're getting uh, laboratory equipment. Okay, this guy is caught. That's a difficult situation to get out of because they've gone with the truck. He's left in the building alone. Oh no, he's got it. He's bought it. Yep, he's dead. He got shot with a laser and then fell at least, what, two stories from that car park? Oh no, he's still alive. And now Julie's hit. Is that two of the main characters gone in the first episode? Already? Come on, Julie, you can do it, come on. Fair play to Julie. She got him in the car. Let's just hope she can get away now. Maybe I ought to go get an ambulance. No. No ambulance. We've already made our diagnosis, haven't we, doctor? He's dying. No matter what animosity has gone on between the brothers in a situation like that, that would all disappear instantly. You ought to be along here any minute now. Lies. He's dead. And the brother can't accept it. Two of us, man. The bad tale of brothers, yeah. Lies. They're going to say, whoa, man. Boom, boom. What blew through here, Jack? The bad, bad. Because he feels that regret for not making up with the older brother before he passed. To let that animosity fester for all those wasted years. And unfortunately, so many of us in life do that. Because that's human nature. We all think we're going to live forever. We don't realize our time is limited. And when there's problems like this, we should do our best to fix them. If you truly care about the person. If you don't, move on. Plenty other people in the world. Oh, damn it, Ben. <laughs> For victory. Okay, that's where the V symbol comes from. Victory. So resentment is obviously starting to build in the human population and people are starting to turn against the visitors. So guys, that was the end of episode one of V. So what are my thoughts? Is it as good as I remember as a kid? I have to say yes, absolutely. There's a lot of stuff in here I wouldn't have gotten as a kid. The whole comparison to Nazism and communistic regimes and this whole episode basically being a metaphor for what life is like under those regimes and how they start off friendly and they start off, you know, wanting to help you and on the outside it appears like that and then slowly, slowly erode all of your freedoms, all of your rights and take over the communications, the press, you know, your jobs you can hold. They get rid of the people who would be a threat to them. They ostracize the remainder. They use the apathy of the general populace to get what they want and rely on that apathy to an extent so it, it's really really well done and really really well written from that aspect the fact that you have a small group of resistance fighters already forming which again would be very similar to what happened under these various regimes that i've spoken about you have in terms of main characters you have Mike, who's the intrepid journalist, the war site journalist or the, the war zone journalist. You have Julie, the scientist. You have the scientist family with the girl who's infatuated with the alien. As I said, I do remember actually what happens with her. So keep watching if you don't know, because that will blow your mind. You have the introduction of the reptilian agenda. Um, as I said, I don't know if that conspiracy existed before V or if it came out after V and it's interesting they did make them reptiles because reptiles are cold-blooded and people have a natural fear instinct against reptiles and snakes and things like that so that was a good choice I think for the the alien the fact that the the aliens are disguised as humans again is probably a metaphor for how either the far right or the far left tend to pretend to be your friend and the solution they're just like you. They have the same problems as you. They understand you and they're going to help you. But that's never the case, right? And yeah, this is actually really, really, really well done. I think when I was a kid, of course, I was just fascinated with the alien voices. The fact that there were lizards and the laser guns. And that's what kind of fascinating as a kid but looking back as an adult this is actually really interesting and i can't wait to see more and it also shows as well this first episode that they're not afraid to get rid of principal characters because the doctor was made a principal character uh, in a lot of the episode and he was gotten rid of quite quickly 
You also have the relationship between Harmony and Willy. Willy seems to be the nice dumb alien, and Harmony seems to be hooking up with him. You have, what else? You have the old man from the, the Jewish concentration camp, and he, his backstory and the reason he's helping the, the family and the reason he's probably looks like he's going to join the resistance, drawing the V or teaching the kids how to draw the V. So yeah, I really, actually really enjoyed that. And I didn't know if I would, because sometimes when you look back at these older shows you really enjoyed before, even older movies, kind of go, yeah, it's not as good as I remember and it doesn't have the same appeal. But I did read something that actually struck a chord with me recently, and it was that in this 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, in the, say, right up until about the 2010s, that there was a strong emphasis on story, on character development, on you know keeping the the audience interested and intrigued, and watching the arc, you know the failures and the successes, and hopefully the eventual triumph of the leads of the story you're watching, and that that has pretty much disappeared from the majority of cinema and TV shows that we watch nowadays. I think that's a really interesting concept because. Here in V, we see a lot of damaged people, and we see a lot of flawed people. The thief, Daniel, the the young girl, you have Mike, who's not a great dad, divorced, seemingly not very good at relationships. And we see them fail, and we see them kind of thrown, just ordinary people thrown into this kind of extraordinary situation which they now have to deal with. And so, yeah, it's... It's something I want to see develop. I want to see how they handle this, how they manage to engage with the aliens in terms of fighting back and if they're going to be able to succeed and how that happens, given their various flaws, how they're going to be able to cope with that. That's what makes it interesting. And I think it was Critical Drinker, I think, was the the person I heard saying that. And I, I think I agree with him because looking at these older shows now as I'm starting to do, I do see his point that a lot of that is missing. Right? The only show in recent times that I actually remember that had a flawed character, who actually didn't end up triumphing, uh, but you wanted to see how he developed, was um, Succession. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but the oldest brother in Succession. The guy who was a drug addict, the guy who tried to take over and you know, had all these problems with the, with the father. And that's another interesting thing they showed here as well, was that the family dynamics were, were showed a lot, you know, the mother being jealous of Mike, being off of the aliens and she couldn't compete, obviously because they're separated, and she was afraid the son would love Mike more than her. You had Daniel and the parents trying to walk eggshells around Daniel because suddenly Daniel was too powerful for them. You had uh, the brother who's the thief and the brother who's the doctor. And the whole conflict they had there, mainly because the younger brother who's the thief was jealous of the older brother, that he was always the golden child, and he as a result could never do enough. So yeah, lots, lots going on here, lots to keep me interested and really, really enjoyed it. And despite the dated special effects, the story is strong enough to still hook me back in. But hopefully you enjoyed my reaction. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe and join me for episode two. Uh, if you watched this back in the 80s or the 90s, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the show. Have you rewatched it recently? What were your thoughts if you did? Did you think it held up or do you think it's become dated? And what fascinated you about episode one? I would love to hear that, guys. So don't be afraid. Leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.